Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. As I previously reviewed Rocco Smart Life Static Clean, which was a long awaited special after all these years. Now, having to see Rocco and his friends coming back from space after 20 years, and, and now they begin to experience what Old Town looks like after all this time, and they, they experience a lot of drastically changes around, hoping that once they get used to it, and they sure did, that hoping change will be for the better, if not for the worse, so on and so forth. And I thought it was brilliant that uh, Nickelodeon had put together a very nice um, special uh, coincide with the original series, and it shows that you can definitely do uh, 90's nostalgia of rights, and try to have uh, a new story to take its place. I mean, it takes time, I know, and I'm glad. I mean, I'm, I'm glad that uh, Nickelodeon did a great job uh, joining in with Netflix, uh, being a distributor for it. That I'm just happy to see that it finally got uh, a lot of attention to everyone who's been waiting this long, especially me. Now, I'm finally going to review Invader Zim Enter the Floor Piss, which is the new uh, TV film that's based on the original series Invader Zim that's created by Jonan Vasquez longtime animator has been known for doing a lot of uh, comic books and other stuff um, before he wound up doing the series for Nickelodeon and the series came out in 2001 like it premiered in late March and had continued to go on um, through the year and sad to say, you know, they've been struggling a lot that, in the way uh, the network's been treating this series. I mean, especially since Jonan had somewhat of a a very um, frustrating relationship with them that seeing that the ratings were declining, that they announced that they were going to cancel the series. Yeah, due to the fact that even though they were going for an older demographic, just like how uh, Ren Stimpy and and Rockles from Our Life were, they consider the fact that they're, that they're all kids shows. That they're hoping that this will gear towards um, an older audience, so they'd be able to follow it very well. And and I did follow it too already, and I really loved it. And I feel like we're going back to the '90s when we had these shows, you know, because they took the risk to to put it on the air even though later on they started doing some editing and s some censorship because the fact that it's too dark for younger kids so Invader Zim suddenly suffers the same problem another problem here though was that because of the popularity of Spongebob Squarepants I mean I like the show but it's pretty overrated <laughs> I mean taking up over the popularity of Rugrats come to mind that this show just never got a chance it deserves and to make matters worse they canceled the series just before they were about to work on the second season hoping that this will continue to go on for its run but and it's a shame and not only that but they never got to release the half of the episodes on Nickelodeon and they only released just uh, one of them and that was just a Christmas special and yeah, what brought in the popularity for Invader Zim was, was Hot Topic started selling merchandising for the series. And it's really cool because now there are people out there who appreciated it. And that's why we're seeing a lot of them hoping that this will gain a cult following, especially for people who are into golf. Yeah. <laughs> that sort of thing. So. Yeah, Nick, Nick Odin was treating this series uh, really poorly, and I couldn't believe it. Because the first time I got to see the series was when we finally got uh, DirecTV. Um, yeah, we had to switch from cable to satellite uh, during 2001. We were still living at that old house, which is now demolished. Uh, it, it was the house that I actually show you, which was once there. And we were, yeah, which is right across the street where El Po Loco and all the places were in Glenno Avenue. Um, 
yeah, the, we actually had cable the whole time until suddenly they took it off because I think they were building a new building next door or underneath it all. So that's probably what happened. Uh, so for a while, for like for the past couple months, we didn't have cable, so we had to be stuck with antenna. And I know that was a problem because there wasn't anything else to watch. So the only way we get to watch um, all of this, we would want to go into Grandma's house because they had digital cable. So we had a chance to watch something for a while. Or sometimes we, we would go to like, you know, our cousin's house because they had cable too. So hopefully we get a chance to watch these. So for a while we did start to get our cable back, but the cable that we started to get, um, however, didn't have all the channels, and which really was frustrating because I, because when I was trying to watch Nickelodeon, it was all static. I couldn't even hear the sound either. All I hear is static, and and the picture quality was pretty bad, and I couldn't believe it. I was so pissed off that. I decided, well, you know what, maybe we can switch uh, from cable to satellite, and and they had it for a better price, and this was basically a, a Christmas gift for me, was to get DirecTV, and that's what we did. We got DirecTV, we finally get to watch uh, all the channels that we never thought we would have, and we had, uh, <laughs> we, we didn't get the local channels until um, later on. But we basically had kept the local channels directly from the cable. So we still had cable and satellite together, but we only had to use it for for the bedroom. Well, we just uh, use it, the uh, direct TV for the living room. So I know it sucks, but that was the only way. Um, but as years followed, though, when we started moving to many apartments here and there, we had we'd been continuing to go on with direct TV because we were we signed a contract deal with them so we'd be able to keep on going and we started making a lot of switches this time started getting new uh, converter boxes for direct TV and so now we get to have it in our bedrooms and living rooms so we don't have to worry about that and then we started making switches uh, to Dish Network uh, later on so we finally went back to Direct TV again. That's when I finally got a DVR. Uh, after I got the, the DVR from Dish Network. Yeah, that's when I I had a chance to watch Nickelodeon Games of Sports for a little while. I got to tape some shows, all the game shows that they had before the channel got shut down. And we started to move to a new place. We, we got Direct TV and, <laughs> and we continued to go on and on until... 2016, because now we just went back to antenna, <laughs> digital over the air antenna. <laughs> yeah, still goes on to today as we know it. But sometimes I do watch uh, Netflix, because I do have uh, my Blu-ray player that plays all the apps. You know, and, and Netflix is included, so there's always time to watch them. Okay. Yeah, I know, I know, I'm. I'm too much info here. Um, but anyway, I saw the show. I really loved it because uh, it had a lot of positive reaction from everyone, for those who've seen it. And I've been wanting to check this out for a while because I saw the trailer. It looks really interesting. And I really loved it. I mean, it's a series about, you know, Zim, who's an alien who joins him with uh, his sidekick, who's a robot named Gurr. Dim-witted, but still very cute. So they wound up um, being sent from outer space, yeah, in a spaceship that's sent by these two guys, by these two uh, alien creatures, and they wound up going straight into Earth. So that way, you know, they get to live on their own, disguise themselves as a kid and a puppy. So that way, you know, they'll be able to experience. Uh, you know the life in, on Earth and be able to take over. While we have a, a human named Div Membrane, who's actually the son of, of the father, who's a professor, yeah, Professor Membrane. Div joins in with his sister, uh, Gaz. 
they've always been planning on trying to go after uh, Zim and trying to warn everyone that there's going to be an alien invasion that's that's happening around the entire uh, town. So, so they were going against uh, their wills to stop it. What happened at the beginning was phase one, so now we're going to go for phase two for Zim to to have a revenge against uh, Dib. Yeah. So, well, you get the story. Now, anyway, I, I do have the TV series, the, the whole complete series of the show on DVD that was released by Anime Works, yeah, Media Brasters, which is now considered to be out of print. So it actually has all the special features and all this other stuff. I even got a copy of the bonus disc that was originally included on the the entire um, complete series where you have all the DVDs separately and it comes inside a Zim's house. It's a box set that they had. It was very expensive though at the time. Um, in fact it's going for higher prices now if, if you get it on eBay. Um, but yes, it was a wonderful set to have. But I only bought them separately. I never received the bonus disc but however I did actually found a copy of the bonus disc online so now I have my own copy so I don't have to worry about that so I don't need to you know go on eBay just so I can get that box set because I'm already fine the way it is <laughs> and by the way I put all the DVDs um, inside one of my drawers so I can't show it to you sorry um, I don't want to have a hard time taking them all out but that's okay I think it's fine the way it is Hey, I didn't do that with Rock and Smart Life um, when I did my review of Aesthetic Clean, so there you go. But when I bought it uh, back in 2004, yeah, I got it at uh, at Suncoast as well as Hot Topic, because that's where they sold all the merchandising over there. It's where, you know, you get to see a lot of uh, Zim and Dib, and, as well as uh, <laughs> Gur, even with the skies as a dog, and and all, all of that other cool stuff, you know, from the show. Really love it, too. And it's, it's such a shame the series got canceled. And to make matters worse, they had to dump Invader Zim on, on one of the worst time slots, uh, joining in on Friday nights with another uh, alien invasion series called Butt Ugly Martians. I mean, that was <laughs> terrible for those who remember that series. I mean, maybe it's better not to, but but it was a show that actually had Robert Stack from Unsolved Mysteries uh, to appear doing the voice of a reporter who was discovering these uh, butt ugly Martians. <laughs> and of course, uh, Robert Stack's been known for playing Elliot Ness in the TV series The Untouchables. You know, come to mind. I mean. I, I would definitely avoid that from the play completely. I mean, I couldn't believe how bad the series was. That's why Invader Zim was a way better show. And I just couldn't believe it. That this is the best that Nickelodeon had to do for this network. Yeah. The way they were treating it. Well, anyway, um, but let's get to the, uh, the TV film of... Invader Zim into the floor piss. It stars Richard Stephen Horvitz, who's been best known for doing the voice of Daggett in the TV show The Angry Beavers. Yeah, the brother of Norbert. Ricky Simmons, um, Annie Bergman, who's been known for playing the in, in the later season of The Wonder Years um, as uh, Kevin Arnold's friend you know, during high school. Melissa Fawn. Uh, been best known for for uh, doing some voice acting in the TV show uh, Digimon Digital Monsters. At this rate, uh, the third season, which is Digimon Tamers. So, in case you remember her, if you recognize her voice, uh, Roger Bumpass, worth some voice acting, especially in in the TV show uh, SpongeBob SquarePants. Wally Wingard. Kevin McDonald, Olivia Doblo, also from the Wonder Years, and other 
other words as well. Paul Greenberg, Joseph Rowland, Eric uh, Bozai, Michael McDonald, uh, Mo Collins, and um, Jonan Vasquez, you know, who's the creator himself. It's written by Jonan Vasquez, once again, you know, based on the TV series that he created. And it's directed by Jenny Goldberg and Jake White. The special begins when Zim and Gurr had suddenly reappeared on their long after years of absence. They were stuck inside the toilet seat <laughs> inside their entire home. That's when Dip Membrane, who's totally grotesque and obese, he's actually stuck in his chair for so long, had been awaiting for them to make their return by confronting them. So Zim reveals that his disappearance was part of his plan, and which at this rate, this was phase one. So with Dib now physically unfit to actually stop him, he begins phase two by invading Earth. So he contacts the almighty Tullus to explain phase two to both Zim and Gurr, but realized that he had forgotten what phase two really entails. So he starts to come up with his own plans while Dip gets back in shape, his father, uh, Professor Membrane, gives um, Dip a prototype uh, Mem bracelets for, for World Peace Day. <laughs> mean to reveal that there's a keynote address inside. Of course, he does express his disappointment in, in Dip's beliefs of aliens. Dip tries to convince him that he's around the whole time tries his best and he couldn't. Dib suddenly goes back to Zim's house just trying to find out what was going on and Zim is already in the state of depression because he couldn't figure out what to do. I mean with Gurr joining in just bringing all this other stuff that they had like all these uh, pizza rolls and <laughs> all these uh, waffles and other stuff joining in that well, he decided to give up and just have Dib uh, be captured. So now they're starting to form a plan for Dib to actually believe for everyone to know that he did capture the alien. And we want everyone to know that there was going to be an alien evasion that was about to happen. So they want to know for sure that, that they exist. Well... It only gets worse. Professor Membrane was to announce everyone about uh, the bracelet that every kid around here ought to use so they could celebrate World Peace Day. Dip brings Zim his father's keynotes the next day to allow him to modify the prototype of the Mem bracelet to tap into the live stream of the keynote. But Membrane suddenly disappears and Zim takes over the controls in stage in the skies. Uh, Dib actually awakens the next day only finding himself that that even at first he thought this was a dream but he knows that his sister Gaz were being imprisoned on their own home guarded by get this <laughs> sort of like a goofy fish-like uh, creature that's taken over as their fodder named Clembrain. So it's basically a clone of a Professor Membrane. Dib learns that Zim has taken over the company and selling all these Mem bracelets to um, everyone. So now by the time they, they held hands together, once it hits 100%, that's when Zim started to start a, a revelation that's going to change everything like in other words um, Zim's going to be using the mini moose to teleport earth as part of space in the direct of the path of a Urken Amada hoping to force the tallest to visit him which then that's where we begin to see the Florpus which would open straight from space yeah it's a 
it's a uh, model that's going to kind of wipe up the entire universe, including Earth. Tim tries to brush off uh, Dip uh, with the concern and tries to go on his way to prepare for the arrival of the Tallis. While Dib and, and Gas were convinced Clembrain to allow them to go outside, because I know Clembrain is going around making a lot of chocolate pudding <laughs> around. Uh, Dib actually uh, brings in his, uh, his entire ship that he built a long time ago. A, a ship that has um, a voice communicator, which is called Tax Ship. Or you can actually hear Olivia Doggle's voice in there. Dib, along with Gaz, use the, the tax ship. That way they can go straight into space and try to, to save um, Professor Membrane that's that's hidden somewhere. Captured. About to stop uh, Zim. Joining in with his robot army for the control of the Mini Moose. And to stop the Florpus from happening. It's excellent. Um, just like the last special I saw, which is for Rockless Modern Life, this one is even better. And I love um, love the animation that they put into it. I mean, the fact that, seeing, seeing that this is digital, Jonah and Vasquez, along with the rest of the animators, did an amazing job using pink and ink, uh, putting it all the pieces together. The animation looked quite different than the TV series, though. Because I notice how different uh, the characters look compared to what they usually look. A lot of excellent uh, voice acting right there, no doubt about it. It's great to have them back. So you know they sound very familiar. I mean, it almost reminded me of those episodes that they had from the series. I mean, like for example, when they when they go to a pizza place and they're about to play like a a video game or some sort or any other or when they uh, <laughs> or when the Zim actually created a a friend a nano friend which was a zit or any other uh, even in school you know, we actually have a teacher named Miss Bitters or, yeah, or any other or a lot of crazy scenes too, like you know when they when Zim actually gave uh, a kid a a present and as he took his eyes out, <laughs> gouging it. Yeah, but a lot of dark humor, and it's very funny. I mean, yes, there's a lot of screaming here and there, but it's also hilarious at times, and with all the jokes, all the random stuff that they put in. You still recognize um, the music, all that dark, uh, all that dark, um, dramatic themes that they put into it. Very strong, arousing. Um, I love the. I mean, yes, it even blends in with some, some CGI animation, in the mix. You know, of all the movements that they had, and all this other stuff too thrown in. Um, it's what I expected. So, For only uh, 71 minutes. Um, it's nice to see all the characters uh, come to life after all these years. It's always interesting to see what, what Zim had it next, you know, <laughs> for Dib. And even though Dib is trying to, you know, to have a plan to actually save Earth from being invaded by by Zim, Gur, and all all these crazy plans that he's doing, because <laughs> you know what was going to have it coming. Also, trying to save uh, Professor Membrane, you know, his father, and joining in with with his sister uh, Gaz to help. I mean, after all, you know, seeing the fact that he stayed in his room for so long, looking all fat, grotesque. You know, I mean, he smells really bad. I mean, it looks like he hasn't taken a shower for, for like, years. All these flies started buzzing around, and it's like, wow. But that's how long he had to wait. 
just to find him. That way he can get his revenge and go after him. Well, <laughs> Zen was trying to come up with his own plan. They had a hard time. <laughs> um, but it was really nice. So, And yeah, I, I mean, this is... It was worth it. So I guess we could say that the original series was Phase 1 from the beginning, while Phase 2 would be the the TV film. So I'm, I'm just glad that Jonan Vasquez uh, took the time to bring it here because I know originally even though he still remembers the the tough times with the hard relationship with the network that they that they were not giving the series a chance until suddenly out of the blue Nickelodeon finally uh, you know, got the roots back up again they decided that they wanted to bring the series back to life after seeing that Nickelodeon is already in their nostalgia fix so in fact um, it was going to be a, a mini series actually or, or hoping that Vasquez was going to somehow continue with the, the entire series adding new episodes here and there but well he made a promise, so he tried his best, and I'm glad he did. So, but he decided he just wanted this to be, at first, a mini series, and then just turn it into a TV film. So, so there you go. <laughs> for a decade, I mean, they were doing a, uh, they had a convention for Invader Zim called Invader Con, where they actually got a chance to show an unaired episode that wasn't, that was incomplete. Mopeness of Doom. So it was really nice to see that. It was actually available on the Soapy Waffles uh, website, but you probably get to download the episode if you can. Um, but it was there, and and it was a shame we could have got plenty of uh, other episodes that he was working on. But yeah, they were unfinished and they never had a chance. So. But if this ever happens, though, I don't know, because who knows? I mean, maybe maybe they might turn this into a re... I mean, who knows? Maybe they might continue to go on, but otherwise, I think it's fine, you know. But I'm just happy to see that we finally got the TV movie that we've all been waiting for after all these years. <laughs> but still, it was an excellent uh, Nicktoon that we had. And I really wish it had lasted more. It should have continued to go on um, through the 2000s. I think a lot of audience would have appreciated it back then. And I wish they had if Nickelodeon wasn't so stupid at the time when they had to struggle on Spongebob and all the rest of their other shows coming around. I mean, this is where I started to lose respect for this this network at back then. And, I started to stop watching the network for a while and started to move on with uh, Cartoon Network with Adult Swim. You know, they had a lot of shows there and then Kids WB you know, for other cartoons and even Fox Box, which used to be Fox Kids. And, yeah, I know, I, I started to... I started to watch something even when I was already in college. <laughs> so I had to move on with other things. But, I mean... It's not easy. But definitely check out Invader Zim Into the Floor Piss if you're a huge fan of Invader Zim. I know you're going to love it. And I know I do too because I love Invader Zim. I love the show. So anyway, that's Invader Zim Into the Floor Piss and I give it 5 stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora and I'll see you later. Bye.